I'll, I'll say this before I get into specifics. The most important time to be calm and reasonable is when no one else is. And I don't mean while people are shooting. I mean right now, after the fact, when, when we're debating on how to solve this issue. Um, there's a trade-off. Anytime you do something, every time you change something, uh, every time you solve a problem, a new problem arises. Um, now, from the, from the right perspective of this, <clears throat> the problem that might be solved by banning weapons or restricting access to weapons for people who use them lawfully is that eventually the government will inevitably take advantage of that situation, as they have in every government in human history. Every single one of them. Not one of them has not done that, that have banned guns. Um, and if you don't believe me, Australia banned all of their shit in the uh, mid to late 90s, and they just spent two years putting people in fucking camps against their will because they had a disease with a 99.8% survival rate. Yeah. Let's be real fucking clear about what happened down there. Same thing in Canada, right? Like, even in Canada right now, if you're not vaccinated, you can only drive out of the country. You can't fly or get on a boat. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you're essentially locked inside of your own country right now. Yeah. Uh, which is super fucked up. So that's not a trade-off <clears throat> that is reasonable, I don't think. Um, and it also doesn't... It would be one thing if we had evidence that that solves the problem, but it doesn't. So the trade-off... Let's just talk about strategically from a rifle to a handgun. 70% uh, of murders are committed with this right here, by the way, not fucking rifles. Um, I could have several of these on my person and no one would know it. It would be hard to do that with an AR-15 most of the time. So there's a trade-off, right? I'm not, I, it, the, the rifle does make it easier to do certain things, like getting a lot of rounds downrange more accurately um, <clears throat> but the trade-off is it's more cumbersome, right? Harder to navigate sometimes. Um, but people that are this mentally broken are, they, they will take the path of least resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's easy to get the rifle, then they're going to go get it and shoot people. Sure, that's, that's a fair statement to make. Um, but what is the effect of banning it? We have 10 kids dead instead of 19. Is that, is, does that solve the problem? The answer is very clearly no. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't accept that premise. I, I think it's intellectually lazy and cowardly for the people involved in this debate to not make that statement. It is, you could ban every gun forever and it wouldn't stop shit like this from happening. Because there's too many in the United States currently. That's part of it. The other part is that people with this sickness of nihilistic violence that's going on in America's youth right now are going to find a way to hurt themselves and other people. They'll find a way. Uh, in the same way that religious extremists find a way. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I don't. Ban ban banning uh, uh, rifles like that, that's not going to accomplish anything. There's no evidence to suggest that would accomplish anything. Okay, and then another... Um uh, issue last night, um, and this one went viral because of uh, head coach Steve Kerr from the Golden State Warriors. Um, he did a press conference before the game in which he didn't want to talk about the basketball game at all. He wanted to talk about why Senate won't pass HR8, which is a universal background check bill. Now, this passed through Congress and is stuck in Senate and was there in 2021, I believe it says, March of 2021. What would this do? Uh, nothing. And why? Because criminals don't follow the fucking law. Uh, so I, I guess over time it could have an impact. But we, what we know about, so there's two big studies that were done on the death penalty. And what was found is that uh, from state to state, places that have the death, death penalty versus places that do not, it is not a deterrent to murder. Right. Mm -hmm. So capital crimes are committed at the same rate, regardless if there's a death penalty or not. Um, we know the same thing about any law. Criminals don't follow them. So while th this would fall into the response category and not the prevention category, while it may get some people off the street to uh, stop them from being repeat offenders, mm -hmm. I guess. And I'm not talking about the shooting. I'm talking about the 
what would become an illegal transfer of a gun, um, <clears throat> it really doesn't solve the, uh, uh, the response portion of this, which I think our, our efforts should be aimed singularly at preventing unnecessary death, not in building a, a complex legal system to address the death that's already happened. So let me ask you this, playing devil's advocate here. Why wouldn't the Republicans pass this then? Uh, what but, would be the harm in it, I guess? I, a lot of them take quite a bit of money from the NRA. A lot of them represent people who don't understand how anything works. And like, they, they're the type of people who would just yell, shall not infringe in the middle of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, cool, man, I got it. But um, you're the, the most conservative justice in the history of the Supreme Court and then Scalia was pretty clear about the second, even the second amendment has limits, right? Like we don't just, where, do you, do you think that a regular person walking around should have an anti-tank weapon and a nuke, right? Uh, those are extreme examples, but there, there is a limit somewhere. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as FFLs, uh, machine guns, like real ones, um, they go through about the most exhaustive backgrounding and profiling of any human being in America. And it's very effective. Like it, it, a, a, a fraction of 1% of those FFL holders are ever even charged with a crime, much less convicted. And typically it's a bookkeeping, keep, bookkeeping error, not an actual crime, not like a real crime, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not a victim crime. So, um, Again, I, I have to go to what the intent is. Um, now, this one, HR8 is a relatively simple bill. It's not one of those ones that has a bunch of uh, random bullshit inserted into it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, and, I mean, just looking at it, right? If, it's, if this is just a universal background check mm -hmm. bill, and you're the Republicans on this one, it used to be about, all right, push and pull, and you got to give something on both sides, right? Reaching across the aisle on something. Wouldn't this be the one then to maybe do it on? Maybe. I mean, so if you're, let, let's say you're in a group of five people and you have, it, it's a team building exercise and you have to solve a problem and somebody comes up with a solution uh, and they are adamant that this is the solution to the problem. And you're like, well, I mean, it solves part of the problem, but not all of it. And it has maybe some unintended consequences that we're not comfortable with. Um, they operate from the false premise that this is a solution to the problem when they know that's not true. They know for a fact it's not true. It's just incremental change on their part, right? So they, they want to do that. And then the next time something evil happens, they want to take more and more and more of your liberty. And that just can't happen. It can't happen like that. It's not... The, there, there's, there's no life, and I, I, I'm, I'm certain that this might <clears throat> ruffle some people's feathers, but there's no life, even the life of a child. It's more important than the idea conceptually of liberty, right? Like we fought wars for generations. People, human beings have been fighting for thousands of years over that idea. It's nothing new, it's not, it's not just us. And I'm not saying that we should have to sacrifice our children for liberty. I'm saying that liberty is off limits, right? So we find solutions elsewhere and there are plenty to be found. Um, but there's no one that wants to have that conversation because these people are simple-minded cowards uh, on one hand and on the other hand, they believe that you're too stupid to have a nuanced conversation about it. They want to talk in sound bites. They want to be like Beto and show up in the middle of a fucking uh, press conference, mm -hmm. a very somber press conference, and start yelling at the presenters of it. Um, they want to get their fucking clicks. Um, social media follows. The corporate people want to <clears throat> uh, 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 make sure they have their ass covered. Mm -hmm. It's all... <sighs> have you ever gotten into an argument with someone or a debate like even with just your wife or something, and you guys argue for 15 minutes but never actually address what the fuck you were talking about in the first place. Yeah. Like it just kind of sprawls. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that is where we are right now. Like we're in the sprawl phase where uh, there, 
there are all these end of like banned weapons, banned high capacity magazines, background checks. Okay, cool, man. Uh, that's not going to stop evil people from being evil.